so as I said before, today's the day. Today is the day we're putting the Loveland Kale on Silverado. Uh, like I said before, uh, I got a two and a half inch spacer for a moto fab for the front. I also have the uh, one inch lift, box, lift blocks for the back. We're probably not going to get those put on today. It all depends on time. Uh, that's probably going to end up being a separate video no matter what. Um, but we'll go through. I'll show you step by step on one side and we'll probably do a, a time lapse on the other. Um, I'll kind of give you an idea of how long it takes me um, and how hard I think it is to get done. So without a doubt, let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Alright, so uh, first step we did was we set the parking brake and we blocked the back tires. Um, next thing we got to do is we got to get the lug nuts just loosened up real quick. Then we'll lift the truck up and we'll go from there. Okay, now that we have the uh, lug nuts loosened up and the truck up on the jack stand blocked off again, the parking brake is set, we can go ahead and take the wheel, take the wheel off. Pretty much what we're out to do here is remove the three bolts at the top here, remove the two here, and we may have to loosen up one of the ball joints so we can drop it low enough to get that get it out. So let me uh, check my instructions and I'll let you know for sure here in a second. Next up, uh, we're going to be removing the uh, brackets for the ABS line. That's this bracket and this bracket. Those are a 10, mil 10 millimeter socket. I would like to make my life a little easier. What I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to move the bracket. And I'm just going to start this back in. Same with this one. Once we have the ABS line brackets out of the way, we have a 13 millimeter bolt back here that uh, holds the brake line bracket onto the coil housing. Fender liner is a little bit in the way, but you can easily just kind of scoot that out of the way. Again, I'm just going to take this bolt, put it right back where it came from. That way we don't lose. Okay. Alright, so now we have to support the lower control arm uh, with our floor jacks. So let me grab our Using 21 millimeter sockets, we're going to unbolt the nut, holding the tie rod onto the knuckle. All right, got the uh, tie rod out, or the tie rod not out. What I ended up having to do was use a 10 millimeter socket. What I ended up having to do was use a 10 millimeter socket on here 
and use a, an adjustable wrench on the top to actually keep the whole thing from spinning to take it off. Um, got it off just fine and it immediately was loose. So makes life pretty easy. Next up we have to remove the 18 millimeter socket. Um, loosen, we're loosening the nut holding the upper ball joint to the knuckle, so right here. And that feels like it's pretty tight, so we're going to use a normal 18 and see if we can get up in there and loosen that up. Okay, that is loosened now. And what we need to do now is get to separate. We're going to use a hammer and just hit the side of the knuckle. Okay, so um, off camera I had a little issue getting the ball joint separated, but we got that. Um, ended up just smacking the bottom of this, it popped it up. We got then uh, three 15 mil or 18 millimeter uh, nuts up here. We had to use a wrench to get those off. And then we had two 15 millimeters that you have to get from the very underside. Um, once that's all done, you can take your uh, floor jack, slowly lower it. Oh wait, hang on. First thing you gotta do actually, before you uh, lower it, is um, loosen that, or completely remove that bolt that's holding the knuckle on. Once that bolt's out of the way, then slowly lower this whole assembly down. Slowly, slowly, carefully. Once it's lowered, uh, should be able to just kind of work it out. And just like that, first one's out. It's so pretty much here's what it's going to look like. The strut's going to look like with the spacer on it. Pretty simple. But before we do that, we have to symbol the. Uh, studs on here and then uh, once we get the studs on we can place this on tighten it onto the strut put it in the truck and we're done we'll, we'll reassemble and then we're done so uh, let's go ahead and assemble together this uh, spacer all right so uh, here are the spacers we're going to go ahead and get these assembled real quick the way these work is you've got the sides that have just regular holes and the threaded sides these go through the bottom and go into the threaded side. These are actually what's going to connect to the top of the truck now, to the actual body or the frame of the truck, and the strut's going to go through these holes. They use a on the size here, eight millimeter Allen. They use an eight millimeter eight millimeter Allen. That's how it goes. I'm gonna, I've already started this one. So we'll finish this one up, put this one on this side. I'll put that one on the other side. That's what, that's what it looks like assembled right there. So this is now ready to go on the truck. We're going on the truck and let's get to it. Okay, so uh, next up is tightening the spacer to the strut. You cannot, uh, these, uh, nuts that came off of the truck originally will go back on the very top. These do not fit down in the supplied holes here. As you can see, they don't fit. So instead, we use the supplied nuts. They have a plastic uh, O-ring in them to keep them from uh, to keep them from loosening up, so we don't have to worry about any thread lock or anything like that. And just like that, spacer is on, and we're ready to install. So now we are ready to uh, install. Basically, it's going to be the exact opposite of how we put it in. And 
And there we go. They are up and through. So we're gonna grab. All right, so what I'm probably gonna do, get that on, is I undid those bolts I had done up top, or the nuts I had done up top. Kind of aligned that, lifted it, got it so it was flat, and then started those. After they started, we can go in with a 15 millimeter and tighten them up. Now I'm only snugging them with this, I'll tighten them. I'll actually do the tighten later. Next, now we grab these top ones and we're going to start with these. All right, uh, sorry about that, we're back. Uh, GoPro died on me and I decided to finish the other side to kind of get an idea of what, was, what I was doing. Um, so at this point, we're, we're about to where we were before, um, probably a little bit behind that. Um, but I, I figured out a couple tricks on how to make things go a little bit sm smoother, a little more easy, easily. So uh, first things first, um, we've got the bottom bolted in, I need to tighten it up still. The top, I need to get the bolts on. Um, then basically we have to get the knuckle on, tie rod on, uh, put the sway bar and link back in place, the little brackets back in place, tighten everything up and we're done. Uh, <clears throat> pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get these top bolts in place. All right, the tops are in place, the bombs are now in place. Let's go ahead and tighten those up real quick and let's go from there. And that covers that. Now, I think I've found a trick to uh, getting this knuckle on. The easiest thing to do is to actually lower this down as far as we can lower it. And make sure your jack stand is on the lower suspension arm, not on the knuckle at all. That way you can move the knuckle around to control it. But actually, before we do that, I think we're gonna get the uh, tie rod in place, which... Tie rod's not too bad to deal with. Hardest part, actually, I think I had with this whole endeavor was getting the up ball joint to release on both of them. And what I ended up doing was adding heat and um, basically just wailing on the thing until it finally came loose on me.
Okay, so all we have left now, we have the top tightened up, bottom tightened up, upper ball joint tightened up, tie rod in tightened up. So all we have left to do is tighten up the uh, sway bar and release. Okay, that should tighten everything up. So let's go through and just double check. And that's our level link kit. In theory, now the truck should sit completely level. Um, when I put the wheels back on. What I'm going to go do is I'm going to go double check the other side, make sure everything looks tight there, throw the wheels on this thing, put it on the ground. Tighten those up and we'll be done. Let's do a time check. It's uh, 2 o'clock. I got started right about 9 this morning. And that time included two, two different hardware store trips. Um, actually, an autopilot store and a hardware store. Uh, which each probably took 20 minutes. And a quick lunch, which probably took 15. So, I mean, there's about an hour out. So, really, it would be like starting at 10. We're gonna till two. So it took about four hours by myself to install this leveling kit. That's really not too bad. Um, definitely kind of like uh, the second side always goes a whole lot smoother than the first. You're just getting the kinks out the first side. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and get this wheel tightened up, the truck lowered down, we'll back it out of the garage, and we'll take a look at it and see how she looks. whole lot better. Um, I'll do a quick, I'll do a, thing, a little thing here that we kind of just say how I feel about the, how I feel about it installed and hopefully here pretty soon we'll be uh, adding the rear block to the back. So you guys uh, have any questions please leave a comment, comments leave a comment. If you like the video give it a like uh, and I hope you guys have a good day.